got too few areas that are fertile. We have a lot of desert and we mustn't destroy the arable land that we have. I think coal seam gas mining will affect everyone in this country who eats. And that means you. And ladies and gentlemen, I read this morning in the Sydney Morning Herald that 0.1% of this state is subject to coal mining. We know that what matters is the cumulative disturbance over time. And in my LGA, that's 50% of the rateable area. On this May Day, can I encourage the New South Wales Nationals to do what is right, to stand tall, and if that means entering into a dispute with your coalition partners, then that is what you ought to do. Thank you. I think it's been a big day, a really big day. Uh, a big day for the landscape. 12 months ago, I stood over about 100 metres over there at a coal seam gas rally, um, and that was considered a huge success, and it was probably a quarter of the size of this one. Um, in 12 months, uh, the community is um, getting angrier, getting more frustrated, uh, and getting louder. Coal seam gas extraction. This, together with coal seam mining, has the potential to adversely affect groundwater systems over large parts of the state. The current New South Wales Government of Exploration licences for coal seam gas lists an area of 19 million hectares. You love this country? Got to fight for it. Because these, these barbarians are coming and they're coming you know, with their bulldozers and their drill rigs and their dump trucks. And they're coming. They talk about coal and gas. Well, as a major resource, water is our most crucial resource by a long, long way. And if we don't protect our water, we're doomed in my opinion. Every litre of water you pump out of the ground reduces river flow by the same amount. There's no way that they can get the gas out of the ground without extracting very, very salty water. It's really impossible to be an organic farmer with a CSG well on your land or nearby. And they're bringing millions of litres of water to the surface. Uh, to me, uh, opposing coal seam gas is a no-brainer. That means that in a small coal seam gas field, such as at Gloucester, it will produce about 5,000 tonnes of salt every year. Should we as a society allow this process to run helter-skelter? Should we wait possibly, like with DDT, 
Agent Orange, asbestos, pilot of oil, until something irreparable occurs. I, I think not. Before we leave a legacy for our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren to say to us, they did what? We're here just to protect our future. Um, countless thoroughbreds have been bred in the Hunter Valley, um, both by us and many other stud farms. Uh, but more importantly, we're, we're here for the families as well. We, uh, we employ 140 people on the farm, many of whom are families. Um, and we're trying to protect our future and, and, uh, and more importantly their future as well. This is the first time that the CWA has taken to the streets of Sydney in its 90 year history. What do we think about that? Our members have heard anecdotes and experienced personal examples of what has happened from unregulated exploitation. Many have personal experience of irreparable damage done to their properties because of non-regulated activities. I'm here because I've had a gutful and probably a lungful of coal seam gas and coal. I'm doing this for my grandchildren because it's their future. I, I don't know how quickly this will destroy our land, but it's the grandchildren's future that I'm really worried about. Yes, we are celebrating 90 years in this association of caring women, and it's to my knowledge, yes, this is the first time we have partaken in a rally in the city. In the past, in the past we've achieved much by rolling up our sleeves to get on with the job. This is more than tea and scones, believe me. The New South Wales government sent, sent a very clear message prior to uh, their election last year, and that was water before coal. Um, Barry O'Farrell's in T-shirts prior to the election was saying exactly that. All we are asking today is for him to step up and follow up on what he said he would do. I hope from today, with the very loud message that has come out, he does. Well, thanks, thanks very much, Fiona, for the opportunity uh, to address you today on behalf of the government. Bringing together environmentalists and farmers and, and, and a whole cross-section of different groups um, uh, with 8,000 people turning up to, um, to voice their you know, disapproval of what's going on. Powerful statement, powerful. And um, look, uh, uh, this government's got nowhere else to go. They, they will have to take on board what we're saying. They will have to give ground. And um, I think it's just a matter of how much ground they're going to give. But I can assure you all, I can assure you all that the government is listening. The government is listening to each and every one of you. If you'd like to listen, mate, if you'd like to listen, what we have done, what we have done, is we've banned evaporation ponds. We've banned BTEX chemicals. We've extended the moratorium on fracking and we've developed a draft policy to deliver on our election commitment to protect our prime agricultural land and water. They're pretty hypocritical because they won't fix and they won't say they're going to fix it. They just keep flobbing us off. So yeah, we're here to demonstrate that we have some of the best land in New South Wales and we want it included in their plan. We've been working hard, we've been working hard as a government, given a system which had zero protections but plenty of exploration licences and dodgy deals done, don't worry about that. We've been working hard to get the balance right. If we don't handle this very, very carefully, we're, uh, we'll, we'll suffer, you know, we'll become a, a second-rate country and we've got such a lot of potential and always have had. Oh, well us farmers seem to have a lot of regulation on us, what we can do with our own land. When it comes to miners, miners seem to be able to override all those considerations and do what they like on our land. We find that completely objectionable and it's about time farmers knew exactly where their rights stood. Our government needs to explain that to us and just not take us for granted any longer. If any proposed mining or gas extraction activity is likely to harm our prime agricultural land or other, or other important rural industry clusters or the water resources associated with those areas, it will not go ahead under this government. Thank you. That is a commitment. We have heard it from Andrew 
Minister himself. I can see a number of ministers standing up there, as well as I think Minister Brad Hazard. Let's turn around and tell the government, country and city, united we stand. Protect our water, protect our land. Country and city, united we stand. Protect our water, protect our land. We are not like Queensland. We are not like America. We have the opportunity now to do it right. It's up to you, ladies and gentlemen. It's in your hands. But don't keep your solutions to yourself. Contact the decision makers and tell them what you want. The coal seam gas industry said the other day, we can't have government interference in that industry because that would be protectionism. Well, I got news for them. It's the role of government to protect. Protect is the key word. They have to protect our farmland. They have to protect our underground water. They have to protect the health and amenity of people, especially in rural New South Wales. And they have to protect our beautiful wild places and our environmental assets. We can't win this as purely a farmer's battle. And we can't win this as an environmental battle. What we've got to do is bring the two together. Bring farmers and environmentalists, city and country together. And this rally here today is the best expression of that I've ever seen. And we're going to win. We are unstoppable. Thank you.